our first guest up this morning, which is Congressman Jody Arrington. Good morning, Congressman. How are you? Well, I'm doing well considering the uh, current challenge and all the consternation and anxiety as a result, but we we will get through this, and uh, everybody's got to do their part. And I look forward to talking to you about uh, things we're doing in Washington, things that are happening at the local level. But, again, this isn't the first uh, challenge related to a virus. It won't be the last. We better learn some lessons so that we respond more nimbly and efficiently with respect to Supply chain issues, I think that's something that we, you know, in terms of my analysis, depending on China or any sole source for materials that are critical to our national security uh, is, is, a, is a bad, bad proposition, and it ends badly. So there are just lots of things to learn, but we're in the middle of it, and we've also got to get American families and and our economy, because that's the second disaster um, that could ensue if we don't do this right. Get through this, get to the other side, get back to normal. Uh, but, you know, we've got to do some, some critical things between here and there. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Of course, right now we're going through these various phases of a stimulus package. And there has been some um, on the right. Uh, again, we, we talked about this yesterday on the show a little bit uh, in the second hour about all of the bailouts that could potentially happen. Checks in the mail was a 1000 Now we're looking at 2000 bucks and. So I was going to get your take on that. I mean, because with the stimulus largely going to, uh, some would argue, do nothing for the economy, only add to the debt, as we looked at Obama's uh, stimulus that he did was a trillion bucks. It was a failure, and um, it, it, it wasn't shovel-ready, and it added to the debt, uh, cash-in-the-mail stuff. Um, how is it, in your opinion, going to stimulate the economy uh, to give people direct cash when they can't go out and spend it right now? Is it just to help pay offset bills and, I don't know, rents and mortgage payments? Or I mean, how does that, how does that, uh, th- that work? I mean, we, for, forever on the show here, I, at a- Andrew Yang's proposal of, well, I think we should spend a thousand bucks a month on every American, uh, every month, which would be $12,000 a year per American take it directly out of the treasury, just give it away kind of stuff. And that's not gone over well with uh, fiscal conservatism. Now, Mnuchin had come out and was asked questions about that, of course, the Secretary of Treasury. And he said, well, this is not the time to be, you know, worried about that. We've got we got all, you know, four alarm fire going on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and, and we need to get this done sooner than later. But what, what's your take on all that? Well, first of all, uh, this isn't bailing out uh, businesses that make bad business decisions. I think that's that's a moral hazard that would create or incentivize more bad investment and business decisions. And I think in that case, bailouts are terrible. Uh, I think what we're talking about is disaster relief and economic recovery so that we can spend less money um, up front than we will long-term if this economy were to sustain a long-term recession. Now, that being said, it's all about the strategies to get from here to there. I think they should be targeted and temporary, as you've heard from several uh, folks on the conservative side. I agree with that. I don't, I'm not bought into this cash assistance I think we have unemployment insurance. We need to build out the capacity there, anticipating that we'll have greater need. Um, We need to cut the red tape there so that it flows more efficiently. Um, We need to look at lending mechanisms uh, to support the cash flow challenges that that businesses face because there aren't any customers. I mean, we're, we're telling folks to hunker down and and they're and and so these businesses are losing revenue, and they've got to meet payroll, and they've got to pay rent, they've got other expenses. Uh, but there's a way to do that so that you're paid back. 
Um, so I think disaster relief loans of different kinds, whether it's SBA or uh, other secured lending uh, mechanisms. Uh, so I would look, and then tax breaks. Uh, look, the first, uh, I should say the second of the three waves of support, the first was public safety oriented. It was emergency response. It was accelerating the development of vaccines and therapies for treating this virus. Um, the second phase just passed yesterday. It came out of the House. I want to talk a little more about that one just because there's some confusion and questions about, you know, what was in there. It was initially a purely Democrat messaging bill, and then we jumped in. I'd say the president, I give him and Mnuchin a lot of credit for dialing that back from expanding new entitlement programs that would be permanent fixtures and would be a disaster in and of itself. We did tax credit, tax credit basically backed assistance, temporary, for workers who need paid sick and family leave, who are affected by the virus, or they're by either directly or their families are affected. And we needed to give them some certainty in the near term, and I thought it was exactly the right thing to do. And we did that by supporting these small businesses and giving them the liquidity, again, through tax credits, that will allow these workers to take care of their selves and their families in the near term. The third wave is this big economic stimulus uh, and and assistance. It's not just stimulus. It's also assistance for distressed industries, more assistance for small businesses. But, you know, I think that with unemployment insurance, with paid family and sick leave in the short run, and with small business disaster relief loans that people will pay back, sort of basically no interest loans, I think that's sufficient. I I worry about the bad precedents, the bad policies, and the unintended consequences of putting cash in people's hands, just kind of, here's a $1,000 check. But I also will say that we need to move quickly. And, and if bureaucracy will choke this out and slow it down and, and and money or support does not get into the hands of the people who need it, then uh, then we don't we miss we miss doing uh, achieving the, the goal which is to get people through this this rough patch and out the other side where we can get back to normal and bounce back to where we were before, which was unprecedented growth and prosperity. And we can do that. The fundamentals of the economy were strong. So we've got to be wise. We've got to be prudent. We've got to be careful, but we have to move with urgency. And there will be some waste. There will be some inefficiency. We won't get it perfectly. And we, you know, we need to, we need to sort of come to grips with that because we're in a crisis and that's just what happens. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that we shouldn't be careful to get the policy right either. So those are my thoughts. I haven't seen the third, package i've only seen the outline from the treasury department i've talked to colleagues about it again i'm suspect on the cash direct payments uh but i do think we need to do things differently quickly and um, make sure that we don't have a worse disaster long long in the long run well so if i hear you correct uh, you well, the first one and two the first and second phase all on board third phase mm, you're gonna have to kind of Hold your nose or take a look at it a little bit more. Um, it's almost like yeah. go big or go home, but you're never going to outspend the Democrats. Uh, we all know that. I mean, the Democrats will come up with something. This this morphed in from a thousand into two thousand dollars being pushed in, in in your house, and it's gotten to be okay. Well, why stop at two? Let's do three. Let's do four. I mean, that kind of stuff is uh, is is very. Interesting to me. I, I said yesterday on the show, I said, look, it's ultimately all of our money. The government doesn't have a job. The government doesn't make anything. The government takes right. from those who have and disperses it out all over the place. And um, it, it's just going to be – and if this virus – and again, it's all a big if, but if the virus is not as bad as we think it is because we've done all the things right and appropriate by social distancing and – 
isolation and, and getting a handle on this thing and the bell curve is flattened out. We've talked about that many times that, uh, we spend a bunch of money here and come out the other side of this thing and go, wow, that was crazy, but boy, we got to pay all that back now. It's, 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 it's very remarkable. And so, yeah. and it's, and it's tough to God. I could understand. I'd hate to be in your, your spot. And it's a tough one to be in to walk in and go, yeah, but I, I just, on the back side of this thing, and, it, and it, as all things come to an end, and this will, and I, I, it, I think it's going to end before June 1. I keep saying that for a long time, that we're in the midsummer and we're looking back going, boy, we went through a lot of cash. And so I, I don't know. It, 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 it's a tough vote. I'll grant you that. Well, I think it, it, is, it is a very difficult and delicate balance to not overreact, right? In a in a situation like this, uh, you have folks that, you know, you don't get any rewards for under responding. You know, you get, you know, you only get penalized for not doing everything, right? And so, one person goes to this extent, then the next person, and 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 so I get that we're talking about the life and the safety of the American people. We're talking about something that could inundate potentially our health care system and become a real crisis. You know, that's the thing. It's, we're in a state of emergency, but, but we could be in a crisis like Italy. So I, I think it's a delicate balance to have that, but also to say, look, you know, we can't lock this economy down forever. We've got to be more, more strategic, more surgical. Uh, quite frankly, like some other countries have. We can learn from some other countries uh, on this with respect to, you know, striking that balance. Uh, there is no such thing as zero risk. I mean, there's risks every day. You know, we have uh, it, every time we get in the car and drive on the highway, every time you light a cigarette up, every time you, you know, there's just tremendous risk that cause problems in the long run. But we do have to do this in a way that we take it seriously. We do have to do this in a way that we blunt this and mitigate and manage it so that it's not out of control and that it does tail off, like you said. And I agree with you. I think it will uh, tail off. And, and I think we will get through this rather quickly. Um, and then you look at the various other viruses, namely the seasonal flu and the millions of people who are impacted by it, and the tens of thousands of people who died from it, even this year. So I think you've got to keep this in perspective, like you said. That's why I'm trying to take a deep breath here on the longer-term economic stimulus package. And you're right. You are exactly right, Wade, about how people seize on these opportunities. There's an old saying in Washington, don't let a good crisis go to waste. It's sad, but that folks look for these opportunities to do things that may not even be germane. I mean, the first bill uh, that the president put in for a request for emergency funding on the emergency response was something like $1.5 billion. And after, you know, we you know, we discussed it in the House with the Democrats in control, it became $8 billion. Now, I'm not suggesting that there weren't more needs to, as defined beyond the president and that we needed more money, but it went from $1.5 billion from our chief executive and the administration to 8 And so that's what we have to be careful, that we don't do things uh, just to do them, just to make ourselves feel better, things that will be tremendously, egregiously wasteful. There will be waste. I recognize it. I'm not looking for perfect, uh, but we need to be responsible in this. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. The, the, the second bill that we passed out of the House that was passed exactly like we passed it and the president signed it started out Horribly, it, it was expanding the entitlement programs that exist today. It was creating paid sick and family leave as a new entitlement, which would have drained the, uh, you know, would have been increased in payroll taxes, which is a regressive tax affecting the lower income more than anyone. It would have hurt the solvency that is already a problem for Social Security and Medicare. I mean, 
So, I mean, this is a serious issue here because had we just passed the Democrat bill or had we not jumped in and negotiated with Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, we would have we'd have had a, a much worse place to, in the Senate. We would have had a less conservative bill sent to the president. And we took all that out, including Hyde Amendment repeals. And for your listeners, the Hyde Amendment is the amendment that prevents federal funds going to abortion. That was repealed in the first Democrat bill in the House. So, yes, we need to look at all this. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm scrubbing it. And I'm not convinced that, you know, all that's being discussed right now is, is needed or appropriate. And I'll get back to you when I get more details on it. Yeah. Well, as we look at GDP numbers on the second quarter, I mean, we've read from everything from down 6 to minus 14 on the GDP numbers for the second quarter. Uh, some economists, uh, analysts, even some physicians are are talking about there has to be a better way of keeping those at risk as safe as possible as opposed to saying, okay, we're going to shelter in place for two weeks, then what? Do we do the two weeks, and then after the two weeks, now we really hadn't flattened out the bell curve. We're going to have to do another two weeks and another two weeks, shelter in place, shelter in place, shelter in place. I mean, this thing could just go on for two months. I hope not. I don't think so, but if it were to, I mean, we're talking about some massive wild numbers and that says nothing about what the market is doing now. I, I was talking on television a while ago about it's interesting to note that the Fed slashed the, the Fed fund rate down to almost zero, but yet the mortgage market reacting wildly about that and not lowering rates, more, uh, mortgages, refis, and things like that are going up in fears of inflation. Now we're talking about yes. a heavy recession. Now we're talking about fears of inflation. Uh, which is not good for those who are looking at the near term of, well, I'm going to refi my house or take out a car loan or go to the bank and get a small business loan. Uh, you know, so inflation could be creeping into this thing because of it all and, and the injection of money. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really delicate balance we're faced with here. I'm not saying I have the answer, but I'm just saying I'm looking at it going, well, you know, I don't know if we, if we, you know, after the first two couple of weeks and if it's, you know, if it's still kind of just out there, not really going hog wild, maybe that next phase is, well, okay, well, let's protect those who are, uh, you know, could possibly, if they catch the coronavirus, that could be killed uh, rapidly with it, that, that, that 65 and up person or a compromised immune system person, as opposed to continue to shut the economy down week after week after week after week. I mean, at some point, you're just saying, okay, you're just, uh, you know, the cure is worse than the disease. Yeah. that that I've said the same thing, Wade. And, and again, it's, it's um, you know, it's one thing to speak in, in generalities, you know, and, and, and platitudes on this. To At some point, you have to, put a pen to paper and you have to put numbers to it and you have to pass it and it's not it's not easy you've said that that you don't envy the position i'm 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 certainly just wanting to get it uh in the right trajectory i I don't know that it's going to you know it's not an exact science the main thing i was concerned about uh were as follows let's make sure that we Support the states and communities with the emergency response for safety and health of the people. Let's make sure we cut these uh, regulations in the red tape that would hamper the response and that would slow the uh, capacity for testing and other very important things like personal protective gear. Let's do that and do it in spades and let's be super aggressive. I don't think you can be aggressive enough there. And then the second piece was, let's make sure we take care of workers and their families and these small businesses who are much more likely to go out of business because of this temporary hit. And let's make sure we smooth that out for them. And we've done that, uh, at least in the short run, with this uh, this bill the president just signed that came out of the House. And so 
that, that, I think I, you know I'm, I feel I feel very good and confident about the, those two things. There's still challenges with capacity for testing uh, kits and other important things. Again, most of that is a supply chain problem that we can't fix overnight. The president declared uh, the emergency. He, uh, he also invoked this Defense Purchase Act. Uh, he's marshaled the forces of the private sector. I think he's doing everything that he can do to speed things up. I think we have to look at the whole structure of the supply chain long term. This next one, you mentioned it, and I'll say it again. I've talked. I've talked a lot about it on your show, and it's it's, and and, and I'll be very uh, candid about this administration and since I've been here in Washington with respect to spending uh, there's been very there's been no change there's been no change in our spending habits up here um, in this administration um, I understand that this isn't the time to get down into the weeds per se on the issue of deficit debt but it's always the time when you're spending other people's money, and when you when 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 you're doing things to save people's grandparents today, we ought to also be responsible in thinking about our grandchildren tomorrow, because yeah. those are the folks that will pay. You know, they will they will pay the fiddler when the when the bills come due on a sovereign debt crisis. And we're talking about doubling our deficit from a trillion to two trillion. One of the things, real quickly, and I know I'm taking a lot of time here, but um, one of the things I'm talking to Senator Cornyn today about and that I've talked to our leadership is we're going to spend some money, okay? I mean, that's just going to happen. And and we're either going to spend some now, we're going to spend a whole lot later with a terrible economy that unfortunately – uh, got hit with something outside of the, 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 the fundamentals of a good economy. And we, we were seeing the largest and longest expansion in the history of the United States economy right before this. So we need to be wise, and we don't need to get stuck on, you know, being fly-specking, you know, all of this, you know, fiscal, monetary, and other sort of mechanisms to keep us in a good spot to rebound. But... I'm talking to our leadership about why don't we put something into this? No matter what we do, whether we keep the direct assistance or take it out, we just do all loans, disaster loans, unemployment insurance, et cetera. Why don't we put something in this that forces us as a Congress to deal with the deficit debt so that when this is over, we, we take it, we, we are forced to deal with the issue that is the longer-term disaster, and I think that's appropriate. Some people say, well, Jody, why are you getting – this is not relevant right now. We're talking about saving lives. I'm talking about saving lives, too, but if we're going to pass this big of a ticket item, let's put something in there, policy neutral, policy neutral, that says we have to reduce our debt to GDP, we have to reduce our deficit, and that we have no choice – but to deal with that when we get through this crisis. Because I heard Secretary Mnuchin say the same thing you did when he came out of the meeting with senators. Now's not the time to deal with the deficit. We'll do that later. But that later never comes. It never comes. Yeah. So I, I just think we should we should all put something in there. We should all sign up to it, Democrats and Republicans, saying when this is over, we'll spend what we need to spend. We'll do what we need to do. It won't be perfect. Let's all rally for America. Let's all rally to rebound. When this is done, we're going to get. We're going to force ourselves to do that. So I've got some ideas. I'm sending them to folks. I'm talking to Cornyn today about it, and these are th- thoughts that came out of that budget and approach reform super committee I served on, if you recall, a year ago or two, two years ago. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking for an opportunity to, you know, to do some good in that regard as well. Congressman Jody Arrington, we appreciate it. I uh, know you're busy, and uh, keep us updated on what's going on, and we'll uh, be talking with you again real soon. 
Um, but uh, we appreciate it, as always, you calling into the program and giving us an update on what's going on inside the Beltway. And uh, don't forget to social distance yourself from other uh, Congress people. Be careful out there, will you? Hey, you bet, man. I appreciate the time. Sorry I was a little long-winded this morning, but we got, we've got a lot going on up here. So uh, God bless you and your listeners in West Texas. Everybody stay safe. Be smart. Use common sense and know that we will get through this. Uh, we will get through this. Uh, God bless. God bless.